If you're looking for the ultimate protection for your 705, you gotta check out this cage. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. First and foremost, this is not a sponsored video. I paid full price for the 705 cage from Armalock while I was at the Huntsville Ham Fest this year. Definitely check out their website. I'll leave a link down in the description below. They're starting to build a lot of different frames for different radios. And they're starting to do some modular things with their cages. These are very well constructed and Seth from Armalock was very responsive in working with me when I ran into a minor issue with mine that has now been resolved. I will be showing you guys a hack in just a few minutes on getting this installed. It is a little cumbersome unless you know this hack. But anyway, let's jump over to the workbench and take a little bit of a closer look at the cage itself and then I'll show you the hack that I found. All right, so let's take a quick look at the Armalock frame, and then I wanna show you guys the easiest way I found to get this kit together. It was a little tricky and it took me a few minutes to figure it out, but once you figure it out, it's not hard at all. What we've got is an eight inch aluminum frame that is powder coated that goes all the way around the radio. Uh, now, I only ordered part of this kit. You can actually get a battery compartment that can fit underneath it. I just chose not to use that. I typically run this with either the built-in battery for the 705 or a uh, external lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, one of the good things about this, I'm just gonna flip this up. Hopefully I can get all of this in camera. The closest point to the edge of the frame is the large knob on the 705. And hopefully you guys can see that, but we get roughly three quarters of an inch offset from the front of the frame to the beginning of that large knob. So you've got really, really good protection for the radio. Yes, it bulks it up a little bit, but this is meant to be portable. So I definitely want good protection when I'm carrying this thing into the field. The other thing about it, let's go ahead and flip this over. Well, hang on, let me cut that radio off and then I wanna flip this over and I want you to see the battery area is still perfectly accessible uh, so that you can get these batteries on and off without any issues and without having to change anything on the frame. As a side note, I am running the extended battery, so it's a little bit thicker. Now, when I first bought this in Huntsville, I could not actually get this battery out while it was in the cage. Uh, but Seth from Armalock was very good to work with me until we came up with a solution that was going to work with both batteries. So uh, that's kind of why I wanted to show you guys how to install this frame is because the spacer that's included is a little tricky to get installed. All right, so we're looking at the top of the frame right now. And one thing that I found was these two nuts that come right here on the top have to be removed before we can install the radio. Now, it's super simple. This is what the nuts look like right there. So just take those two off. We'll put those back once we're finished up. The other thing I wanted to show you is the spacer itself. You can see that that is not very big, but it does exactly what we need it to do. The problem is how to keep this in place while we're trying to assemble the frame. What I found was using blue painter's tape was the key to getting all of this to work and making it super easy. Just peel off a little small piece of the tape and roll it back up on itself so that it is sticky on both sides. Now don't get too much here. You don't want this to be too thick because you don't want it to interfere with anything or change the tolerances too much as we put everything back together. Once you've got this kind of taped down and your holes lined up here, this is really easy to get reinstalled. All I'm going to do is turn the cage upside down and then slide all of this uh, into the cage itself. So the radio with that spacer will all slide right in there. Now it's just a simple matter of lining up the holes and starting the screws. Now, as you're starting these screws, just get them in there two or three threads. Don't tighten everything down until you have all of the screws in place. Now that those four are completely secured, I'm going to turn the radio back over 
and we're going to put these two nuts back where they belong. Keep in mind when you're doing this, let me see if I can pull this apart and show you, this T-nut, maybe we can get this to focus, has two different sides to it. This side that's got the little raised part to it is the part you want to go up from the bottom of the radio. So I'm gonna hold that just like that. I'm gonna put that underneath right here and then just start this screw. Now, hopefully we can make this visible on camera. You'll notice I've got that uh, nut turned sideways. That's the way you want it so it'll catch. And you'll also notice Hopefully we can see that on camera, that that little raised area on the one side is what fits into the slot itself. Now it's just a matter of tightening everything back up. Now that we've got the first one on, we'll just go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. And that's how easy it is to get the radio installed with the spacer. If you don't use the spacer, you'll be fine with the standard battery. You can still wiggle it in and out of the cage. But if you're going to use this extended battery, you absolutely have to have that spacer to give this battery enough clearance to be removed. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.